keep holding my hand Not so altruistically endowed As I sought you to be Maybe you're not for me So what if I Welcome to Barracks Room Sessions. My name is Luis Gambedos. This is a podcast where we record the artists and afterwards have a conversation. I'm here with uh, Nicholas Roche. Hi. Hello. Uh, we recorded a song called uh, Romanticize. So first question, uh, what's the song about? Uh, it's about me sort of in this weird relationship with a, with a girl and it sort of felt like she wasn't putting as much effort into it. Mm-hmm. as me she's she's sort of left me on the hook <laughs> and uh <laughs> that's that's like the worst thing to do to a person and it just god so i wrote a song about it all right cool typical cool. singer songwriter fashion so uh did you write the the words first or, or the guitar uh first? i actually started with the the opening like riff part and then like i just never had anything to add to it so mm-hmm. like i just ended up writing the chorus riff and then the song sort of came together do you have like a like a list of songs or of uh, like that you have or you just have like a few parts to them and uh right now my iphone is filled with like voice memos oh, of okay. just like parts of songs that i haven't finished like where it's just like I write riffs or chord progressions and that's it. Oh, I, I do the same. Yeah, I, I thought you meant like actual voice, like you're like like you sing. I I do I do that too. Oh, like, okay. It's just like sometimes I'll just have like singing and like nothing else and. Cool, cool. Um, what kind of a, uh, what kind of guitar do you have? Actually, I didn't I didn't check to see. Uh, it's a Taylor. It's a Taylor Custom. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. I saved up forever for that guitar. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> it took a long time, but I got it, and it's it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> um, so you also do recording as well, and um, and it showed because we, we recorded that really fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've gotten sort of used to it. I've been trying to ease myself into recording myself which is the funny that's the funny thing is like i've recorded like all these musicians all my Mm -hmm. friends and stuff and they're like hey nick like where's your stuff and it's like i don't know and they're like but you record where's (laughs) you have all this uh, recording equipment and you don't have anything like online it's like yeah i just i'm so like self-conscious about it it's hard to like just sit down and do it oh yeah it's also annoying too right for me it is like and press record and then go to go to the microphone and then mess yeah, it up and that's the worst part is to sort of have to set up for yourself and then like it's it just turns into a mess so right now mm-hmm. i'm working on my first album and i'm sort of kind of looking around for potential like assistant engineers to help me like just get like the basic stuff down because it's it's way too like it's i'm too in my head okay when I'm recording, it's hard to sort of separate yourself from that and just hear the sonics of what's being recorded. So it'd be nice to have someone to help. Oh yeah, definitely. It's definitely two di- two completely different jobs. Yeah. But uh, so you, do you have all, all the all the songs uh, for the album, or um, do you have a list? I'm of... I'm writing them right now. So oh, okay. Like, it it was sort of a thing that just happened. Um, the song that I played romanticized was mm-hmm. originally supposed to be an EP with a bunch of other songs and then I I started writing new material that was sonically different from like everything that I've ever recorded but like I just really liked the sort of tonal characteristics of it and so I started basically just decided to start writing an album from scratch like oh, okay not using any of the songs that I've ever written before and just start completely new. You know, there's a saying in the record industry that, like, the second album is when you really find out what an artist is made of because 
the first album is 10 years worth of material so like it's like a culmination of like everything that you've worked for so I thought like what if I just start brand new and put all my effort into this one album and just see really see what how good I am like as an artist and what I'm capable of man you're you're, you're skipping the first album you're trying to put yourself in the mindset of the second album for your first album yeah pretty That's much oh, okay pretty much so. cool 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 uh, how many songs do you have done right now uh I have about six I just finished one the other day and I'm moving up I have a I have a bunch that are sort of ideas just mm-hmm. not finished oh uh, no but like for the most part I'm, I'm doing really well considering that all my previous songs took like a really long time for me to write like <laughs> it's anywhere from like a m- couple months to like a year mm-hmm. of writing for each song just because like it's stretched out over a long period of time where I'm just I start a song and then move on to another one. Basically, it's just like piecing them together as I go along. Oh, okay. Um, some of the songs are you gonna add drums or give it the full band? Oh yeah. Um, this is like this is pretty much like the album. Like I want it as close to like a studio album as possible. I'm doing. I'm gonna be producing like horn arrangements. Oh, cool. For the whole thing, drums you know acoustic double bass like hmm. i have one track that i'm really excited for because i want to throw a clarinet on it like <laughs> it's just gonna be really cool like and i've always looked up to like musicians like brian wilson of the beach boys who made like pet sounds and like he pretty much arranged that entire album and like that's something that i want to be able to accomplish is like that weight of like recording mm-hmm yeah, you also have to do LSD. Are you gonna do that too? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I've been toying with the idea. <laughs> we'll see how far I get without drugs first. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the songs. Yeah, he actually he literally recorded pets, right? Is it the song called Pet Sounds? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I heard a dog or something in a train. Oh yeah, he has like <laughs> all these like sonic elements that are like were never used in pop music before Mm -hmm. he pet sounds was the inspiration for the beatles sergeant pepper oh yeah i remember was it paul mccartney that mentioned that yeah paul mccartney said that that was like even though the album wasn't like a huge commercial success Mm -hmm. critically like huge musicians were like so moved by it and then that started like just everything like Mm -hmm. in the music as we know it today oh uh you mentioned uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, before we started actually recording. And uh, are you, you, um, I know you're a fan of like Hendrix, but uh, would you consider him like a favorite musician or? No, not really. Um, I don't listen to that much Hendrix, but oh, like okay. I, I very much appreciate him. But I am very old school. Like a lot of my influences, like are from sort of back in the day Bob Dylan is a huge influence of mine the Beatles obviously mm-hmm. Ryan Wilson I love jazz there's Louis Armstrong absolutely Miles Davis like oh I I literally just love like all music it doesn't matter to me like the genre it's really just about the artist cool uh, so, uh what bands are you listening to right now uh actually lately I've been listening to a lot of Paul Simon and Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, yeah. They're That's not the... modern, but... <laughs> yeah. I... Last time I saw Paul Simon, he was, like, performing at, like, the Democratic National Convention. That's right. I miss that. I wanted to see that, but... It was really good. It was really good. Yeah, no. He it... still got it. <laughs> he's he's so incredible. His voice hasn't changed, like, almost at all. Like, mm-hmm. it's super, like... It's still, like, pristine and, like, young. Like, you wouldn't even know that he's, like, getting up there. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is so cool because he's writing music, like a lot, a lot louder music. I think it's uh, I think the last couple of albums just been a full band. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's still as like powerful as as ever. He's that's someone to look up to, and like I'm in terms of music, I'm a melody man. Mm-hmm. And Paul Simon, like, he's the king of melodies in my opinion. Like they're so beautiful and complex 
and something that you don't see in a lot of music, especially not pop music. Like, mm-hmm. if you really listen to pop music, it's it's sort of shorter, rhythmic, melodic lines, which are like, if you're trying to write a hook, that's actually pretty easy to do. Is to just write like a short like melodic phrasing and then just go with that and like repeat it or slight variations but he does like these really long sort of melodic lines Mm -hmm. that are like beautiful that stretch across like these intense like chord progressions and like really interesting change changes and i don't know he's so cool how long long have you been uh playing guitar um not too long i'd say about my junior year of high school which was around 2011 yeah not long ago Tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, you mentioned like you appreciate you know a lot of musicians and and uh, I don't know. The, the, see, I from listening to you, I'd I'd, I'd assume you played for much longer. Oh, thank you. you know? I yeah. definitely practice and try to push myself. <clears throat> Sorry. Part of uh, writing romanticized was challenging myself as a guitar player and vocalist. Oh. Like, to be able to write more sort of intricate um, riffs Riffs, while singing is definitely more of a challenge. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. I think Mm -hmm. people underestimate how hard it is to play and sing at the same time until they actually do it. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've worked as as a producer uh, for for how long? Or audio uh, engineer? Um... Not too long, about maybe three years. Three years? Yeah. I think you've... Three or four years. Oh, yeah. But that's not your. That's not what you majored in, right? You majored in uh, video? Uh, um, y- digital filmmaking at NMSU. Mm-hmm. So I actually do filmmaking, too. Um, recently, I've been working in Albuquerque on a web series where I do production sound. So boom oh, mopping cool. and mixing. Oh, all right. So... So that's where you got your audio background? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, like, while I was going to school, I'd, I spend a lot of time, like, reading mm-hmm. and learning about, like, everything I can. Like, even right before I came to this podcast, I was reading about, like, digital audio converters and, <laughs> and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm nerdy like that, but it's really pushed me along and made me a better engineer and producer and musician. No, yeah, same, same here. Like uh, recording, recording other bands, and then it's a uh, it's a lot easier now for me to record myself. I just have, have had that little bit of practice, not as long as like four years, but like, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, w- with that being said, uh, we're going to um, listen to the song "Romanticized." Again, I'm here with uh, Nicholas Roche. This song again called "Romanticized." <laughs> Maybe you've lost a love And I don't know why Maybe it's all in your head And you're wasting goodbye You're wasting my time You won't look in my eyes But you keep holding my hand not so altruistically endowed as I sought you to be. Maybe you're not for me. So what if I romanticize? I didn't mean to. Didn't seem to mind Not at all And I am falling Demonic falling Don't look back Don't look back Don't. 
Little squabbles of calm scribbles coloring outside the lines You say, defining tension I refuse comprehension Is that just the way it goes? Is that the way it flows? Is that the way it goes? It's all in your head And maybe Maybe it's not So what if I romanticized I didn't mean to didn't seem to mind Not at all but I am falling Demonic falling Don't look back Don't look back Maybe you've lost the love And I think I know mine You say hi I say Low You say Hi I say Goodbye All right, so that that was that song's called "Romanticized." Um, so uh, Nicholas, uh, next question: um, uh, What do you mainly use to listen to music? To like, what do you use? Like, um, listen to music on your phone or car? Uh, I actually still listen to CDs. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much, uh, my my car only has a CD player. Oh, okay. So it's really fun on road trips for my friends. Cause like I just have like a huge stack of Dylan <laughs> CDs and they're like, come on, Nick, like you don't have anything like cooler. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I pretty much, I still buy CDs. Like I like having the physical format and vinyls are too expensive and yeah. MP3s are too lossy for me. Um, the sound quality just isn't good enough that I feel okay buying them. So just CDs. Yeah. Um, CDs are are they are they printed in wave format? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They're only sixteen bit wave, but it's still the it's chart. still higher quad quality than compressed MP threes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it it's technically lossless. Lossless, yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like the yeah, FLAC or something, F L A C. Uh, FLAC is a lossless format, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, um, it's not, yeah, it's not. Wave is the format. Yeah. I'm new to it. I still, I still haven't, uh, like, uh, cause I know you can buy players that they play like wave format. I do. I have like a, a little DAP, a digital audio player mm -hmm. and it plays, um, FLAC. It plays like pretty much every audio format you can. Oh, that's great. But I just like. I don't. I can't plug it into my car. So yeah, right. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just like it's hanging out there, and I actually I got the entire Beatles discography mm -hmm. on Flack. Like it was like a cool little special edition. It's like a little Apple. Was a it green apple? And it's like a USB, 
and you just plug it into your computer and it has like their entire discography in what? lossless format. Oh wow. And full like 24 bit 44.1 kilohertz. Did, was it a was it um remastered remix or just a song? Uh, it like was that? remastered, yeah. Oh, okay. Which is I don't know. I'm still torn between whether I prefer like the remastered versions cuz like the original Beatles albums were recorded in mono. Mhm. And then so they remastered these ones for stereo. And it can get a little weird sometimes like the way they panned and yeah where separated it, some of the vocals and like so i don't know it's i'm just happy that i have them <laughs> there was there's a couple of songs where they mixed uh the drums like on uh on the completely other side was that strawberry fields forever um i don't know yeah i think i think it's that song like the, the drums are completely like on the left the left uh left side of the, the speaker oh really yeah I think that's the I think that's the song. Don't quote me. <laughs> that's weird. I don't know anybody that mixes drums in mono. Not like that. Like usually drums are centered cuz you want like yeah. the full. And also it just feels weird when drums are like on one side. That's yeah. a that's a tip for any of you guys mixing out there. I know you're being cool and experimental <laughs> and that's that's awesome, but <laughs> drums generally just do not feel good if they're <laughs> panned hard left <laughs> or right. No, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. They were definitely experimenting. I think. I think. I what album was the Strawberry Fields? Was that Sgt. Pepper? Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> I mostly listen to like Sgt. Pepper and Abbey Road and Revolver. Those are my favorites. Revolver. Yeah, oh, it's a good album. Yeah, I like Sgt. Pepper. It's a great album. Sgt. Pepper is probably one of my favorite Beatles albums. It's so good. Like, there's a reason it's... Yeah. All right, oh, let me find that. A... Oh, right. <laughs> uh, well, time's up, folks. Uh, <laughs> that's it for this podcast. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's my watch. So, um, when uh, when do you think you might have uh, the album like uh, done? Uh, spring, spring twenty seventeen. And that's that's a hard deadline. So whether it's like full twelve track or less, it's mm-hmm. gonna be out. I have to. I promise myself. No, so you set yourself a deadline then. Yeah, yeah. no, I have to finish this album. I'm planning to finish like all the songs by December. Mm-hmm. Record all through January and february and then like do whatever i need to do and then have them out like probably around april cool cool Cool. like um you have any uh any producers in mind right now or uh it's self-produced self oh that oh that you're gonna produce it okay so you you want someone to help you out like record it yeah just engineer it like just because it'd be weird to like mic myself (laughs) I just don't want to do it anymore, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy, like, micing other people, but it's just, I can't mic myself. <laughs> Did you, um... Uh, I forgot what question I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, dealing... That's right, the the, so- the software you used to record. Um, what was it called again? Uh, Adobe... Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition? Yeah, I love its simplicity. It's right. There's no plugins, right? Um, you can, you can use plugins. I just don't like plugins. Oh, okay. Like I'm, a, I'm kind of anti-plugin. I'm that guy. <laughs> I don't know what guy. No, uh, but, uh, like if you, oh, like if, if possible, like I'd always like choose like a real, like reverberated room to record in rather than using a reverb plugin. Like, yeah, that's just the way I, I try to do things. And if I can, I can. And if I can't, then I, I even, like, I'll, I'll loop, like, vocals or whatever I need to through, like, guitar pedals. Because mm-hmm. it's just, oh, okay. it's nice actually having, like, physical knobs to play with. And I usually track everything live. Like, I have a 500 series channel strip where, like, I have a preamp, an EQ, mm-hmm. and then, like, I can plug in any other things that I need. And just run it all straight into the recording, like, so that post 
is almost no work. It's just mixing. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think for one of my songs, I I plugged in um. Um, originally I just used plugins for my electric guitar. I was just so lazy to set up my amp. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have my amp, I have my like, I have my pedals here. I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm tired, so I'm just gonna plug it straight through the interface. <laughs> which yeah, which is a bad idea. Like, I, uh, yeah. so normally I like to mic it, but uh, yeah, if I'm if I'm not feeling it, screw it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's you know, one way to approach it. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of Adobe Audition, uh, but, uh because. You, like you said, it, it comes with the, like the suite right of all Adobe products. So I'm assuming a lot of people use it for like um, sound engineering, like uh, uh, for like film. Yeah, it it, it is used uh, for film to some extent. Um, honestly, though, like the industry standard across the board is Pro Tools. Yeah. Um, for film, for music, for everything, it's oh it's really pretty much that. yeah. That's pretty much what every studio uses, and it's a great program. But it does have like a a learning curve mm-hmm. and even most like major studios require that the person is like certified in pro tools oh wow. to actually work in the studio like as a, an engineer yeah i i i picked up pro tools and then i tried try recording with it uh I already learned Logic, and I didn't feel like <laughs> <laughs> But everyone suggested, like, Logic, yeah, get Logic, get Ableton. I'm like, okay. Well, they they do have a free version of Pro Tools now, so mm-hmm. if you just want to, like, get on and start, like, learning how to use it, that's a good place to start. And then YouTube is, like, a great resource. Like, yeah. For everything, really, like, if you ever want to know something, Google or YouTube, that's the best way. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I did that with Logic, too, and I, tra- and I read the entire... Um, yeah, the the book, and I didn't get a lot out of it, probably because I read it mainly when I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Logic. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll try. Ableton maybe probably would be the next thing. I yeah. I mean, like, honestly, they're, they're just tools. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you use. Just, like, if you're happy with the way it works and it's laid out for you then use whatever you need um the rest like pro tools is just like the most it has the most available for it so like that literally every plugin that you'll ever find is available for pro tools but like you <laughs> might not find that for ableton or yeah for audition or anything so it's just versatility i guess above all mm-hmm. dying to see your uh, cd collection so Ooh, we'll... just look in my car. <laughs> I'm not even joking. You can ask my friends. It's just like stacks of CDs. Like, do you, do you go the was it all that music or something or where do you where do you usually go shopping for CDs? Uh, just anywhere really, honestly. Um, I spend way too much money on it. Like, if I go into like Fye or something, yeah, I'll, I'll unload like thirty bucks on CDs. <laughs> I'm like I shouldn't have done that. I need <laughs> I need this money to survive. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like it's important to like have more music in my life and like I yeah I could pirate like online, but I'm not really about that. So yeah, and it's all in MP3 too. So you you, won't, yeah. you usually won't get the good quality. Uh, well, you can actually torrent like the well, higher yeah. quality. Yeah, they, yeah, they have the uh, flex. Yeah, they have plaque. They have like bootlegs, like online of like masters of the albums. Mm-hmm. And then like it'll say on there. That's serious. Yeah, that's serious. You're just, yeah, I wonder how that even got out there. Oh well. Uh, angry engineers. Um, sometimes <laughs> if for you artists out there, don't don't mess with the engineers, ever. They can, they can do like a lot with your music. Like, well, yeah, they're 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 like the uh, you know. Just be kind. The un- unofficial member. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it's cool. Like engineers have actually gotten like a bigger place in studios than they used to be. They're much more respected now. Yeah, hopefully in pay. In the old days. Oh, they get paid pretty well depending on where you go. Yeah. Because everyone needs an engineer. Like you can't. Like I know there's a lot of songwriters out there who record on their own and you can do that but like even what i do 
with all my equipment is nothing compared to what a studio can do. Mm-hmm. Like I may be 10% there and everyone who thinks that they're close is probably like 1% there. <laughs> like it's, it's an outrageous amount of money that goes into a studio. Yeah. 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 Like, um, I recently saw this movie on, uh, on like Netflix or something. Ah, oh, I shouldn't even mention it because I forgot the name. Sound City? Is it the... It's a new a new TV girl. show. Oh, TV show. It's a new TV show on Netflix. New series. I don't know, but like the the music producer was asking for like 30 grand. And, and like the the film was like a, like late 70s. You know, just for a song. Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. I think... A lot of it's studio time. Most studios are like probably a thousand five thousand a day to track Mm -hmm. but if you're good you can like knock out like five or six songs yeah because it starts an entire day yeah they only charge studio time if you're not good you're gonna spend a lot of money (laughs) like or if you want like more intricate like arrangements or way more instruments on it then it costs more i think famously like bohemian rhapsody is like one of the most expensive like singles ever made Oh, do you know how much it costs? It's it was supposed to be most. It was a lot. I don't remember <laughs> the exact number, but it was like more than any at that time, like outrageously more, like almost the cost of like making a full length movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> expensive, yeah, but it worked out well for them. You're right, it made them made the money back plus more. Oh yeah, yeah. It's one of those uh, one of those bands where people will still buy buy the music. Like a lot, of, yeah, yeah. I would say a lot. There's a lot of people who just don't buy music anymore. Yeah, that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of sad. But I think I think it's coming back. Like, people actually paying for music is coming back. Mm-hmm. I You know, you see things like Bandcamp that's made a huge difference in the music community. And now these indie artists who had no, like, outlet to release their music or any way to really get money for their, for their music without, like, going through a label now have this opportunity to just like release their music online and have people pay what they want like more than just like putting a label on it for like this is a $12 CD you just buy it now you can price it at whatever you need to and the public will most of the time pay more than it's actually priced at just because they want to support you and they know it's going directly to the artist and like vinyls came back which is really great because that's like a definitive like source of income for most bands like if you release your music on vinyls like people will buy them and that's great like cds like people can torrent them like they can rip them and then just like send them out there and people can go online and just like pirate an mp3 but vinyl like it's a whole different realm of music because it's 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 a totally different sound that you can't get from what we get with mp3s or digital Mm -hmm. so like that's i think what makes the medium so powerful as a distribution method yeah and it's big it looks nice yeah it looks cool (laughs) it looks cool you can act cool with your friends you can bring them in and show them like your huge shelf full of vinyl records and be like oh cool look at all this stuff I was a, uh, I was at. We were filming somewhere in Albuquerque. No, in Santa Fe. And we were filming in this person's house. Or was it Santa Fe? No, it was Alamogordo. That's where it was. Oh, Sorry, okay. I go a lot of places. We were filming in Alamogordo, <laughs> and we went to this person's house. And I walked into the living room, and they had some huge speakers, and I was like, "Oh, what's this about?" And then I look on their shelf, and it's like all these vinyl records like crazy like they had neil young's like crazy horse like original (laughs) they had a george harrison's like all things must pass they had like all these like dylan albums and the who and like all original like lps and it was like i was like in heaven and (laughs) nobody else cared they're like oh cool i don't what are those who are those artists like (laughs) who cares do they have Kanye like (laughs) (laughs) Kanye and vinyl yeah 
yeah the, um i've i've uh i've got to listen to a lot of uh beatles on vinyl it's great to listen to just uh uh i, I guess uh listen to the audio listen to how the engineer you know mastered it yeah and what the intent was on vinyl because uh, that's why that's why i'm assuming that's why it probably needs to be remastered when it's like converted to another format. yeah um vinyls have a different frequency response mm -hmm. than any digital format so uh, naturally if you're going to transfer it to either one you have to completely remaster it mm -hmm. um vinyls naturally like cut high frequencies and boost low frequencies um, well, just the analog format in general. So um, when you when you have the music there, you actually have to like play with it and adjust it however you need to. And digital, like that's a reason why, like back in the '80s when CDs first came out, mm -hmm. people were like, "Oh, these things sound awful! Like they're so bad." It's because they were they were stamping them with the same masters as they used for vinyl. Oh, yeah. so CDs naturally are very like flat with how they respond to like the frequency and then they were putting on like these masters that were like mm -hmm. super high boosted bass. in the highs and like cut lows so like it just sounds harsh and gross and so like they're like oh god <laughs> let's Things fix this yeah <laughs> so if you see old cds i would stay away from them <laughs> newer stuff's fine it's good maybe that's why the 80s died so quick uh, no, it was the cassette. The cassette. Oh, the cassette in the 80s. Or oh, well, uh, 90s was CDs? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, CDs came out in the 80s, I believe. And then, they weren't popular. But they then. didn't become popular until, like, the 90s. Mm. And then the iPod came out. And everybody was like, oh, cool. Let's just not pay for this anymore. <laughs> so they just started <laughs> taking music. Yeah, I have all my music in one, you know, player. Yeah. It's funny how fast people will just, like, steal things if they have the opportunity <laughs> so uh do you, do you have a you're not you don't listen to music on spotify or any no not really um you know data plans and stuff i can't yeah it gets expensive yeah so especially if you're streaming all the time yeah so i'm just nah just cds pretty much youtube sometimes youtube's all right like I I like going and watching like live performances. Oh yeah, same here. Yeah, but there's there's this really cool series uh, on YouTube or channel I guess. It's called So Far Sounds. You should mm -hmm. go on to it. Basically, it's like a global collective of like concerts filmed. It's not well. I guess sets. Good quality. Uh, some of them. It varies because it's like it's literally like in different cities across. The, the whole world and the oh, country okay. so like cool. it's like so far sound chicago and new york and like dallas and like it's all local musicians like from their like indie stuff that hasn't really taken off yet oh wow and so you can go and just like watch like a, a performance of their song for free and like it's great exposure and even as a musician you can go and i think you you either send i think you send like your material to them and then they'll they will accept you to like perform for one of their shows and then uh, you can either take the payment from the show or take a video hmm. and then it goes straight up online and those things get like really good hits. views yeah and you can tell like it varies between like which artist is pushing it like obviously some artists are more popular than others so their views rise much faster yeah very true very true. All right. Um, so, uh, probably should ask this a while ago. So, uh, how do people get a hold of you through um, uh, Facebook? Facebook, I guess, right is the best place. I'm so bad at promoting. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I well, just barely got a Facebook like a couple months ago because everyone right. kept asking me. So, right now, like, there's like a. Uh, do, do you have any recordings? YouTube. YouTube? Oh, I have okay. a couple stuff on YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get more someday. I don't know. Well, I mean, you told me you, you like the live sound a lot more. So, yeah. so pretty much pretty much get on your Facebook to find out where you're playing next. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. If you can, see me live. Um, just because I'm weird and awkward on recordings. 
<laughs> Not that it changes much live, but it's more <laughs> it's it's more fun. I don't think he, I'm yeah. I haven't seen anyone as bad as me. I I don't even talk on the mic. You're right. super quiet. You just get up there and then you play and then you disappear. You're a ninja performer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I uh, um I usually have to No, no, I stayed there. I stayed there pretty late. I got to, I think I got to hear like two or three of her songs. But yeah, usually I have to get back to the kiddos. Yeah. <laughs> but um Yeah, no, no. I I I hardly ever talk on the microphone. I just like playing. That's about it. I I don't do it at open mics. Um I don't talk very much at open mics because, like, I feel like there's an etiquette that every musician needs to follow when they're at an open mic. It's like you play get quick. up there, you play your song, and then you get off. You Like, I've seen people who talk for hours at open mics, and it's like, you can't do that. Like, this is not your show. This yeah. is a collective show for everyone who's there. So you go, and you you hope they enjoy it, and you enjoy the performance, and... It's a great way to like build yourself as a musician. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but you don't go there like practicing your like your famous like speech. Like, <laughs> I wrote this song three <laughs> years ago while sitting on the bed with my cat, and then go into the details <laughs> of it. And it's like, yeah. I also have to like uh, listen to see who who yells out one more song. I'm like, is it if it's my friend? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we hang out. You can hear me then. <laughs> yeah, I, with some people, no matter no matter who they hear, it could be their mother. One more song, all right? I'm gonna play one more song. Play Just that same song for my mother. Uh, <laughs> well, that was mean. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm a little mean sometimes. But um, uh, so other than that, the song was called uh, "Romanticized" uh, by Nicholas Roche. Uh, album said spring, so it has to come out in the spring. Spring, yeah, spring of next year. All right, so you know, so this is on record. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I, I'm aware it's happening. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, all right. So you know, again here with uh, Nicholas Roche, and uh, this, this is Barracks Room Sessions. Uh, let's say uh, goodbye. All right. Later.